I'm Valerie Espinosa, your New Mexico Public Regulation Commissioner, and it's good to be back. It's been a while. I haven't done a program, but we have a very special guest today, and his name is Steve Bublitz. Yes. And he's from Los Alamos, and he's got a whole lot to talk about, and I thought it was so important to get him on and have the viewers see what he's going to do in the community. And so welcome, Steve. Well, thank you. Appreciate it, Val. I'm so excited about this, and <laughs> I really want to help you promote this event. And, and I look at all these cute pumpkins and the carving. Let's start out by talking about yourself and telling us what, what you're going to do here that's so exciting. Sure. Well, I'm Steve Bublitz, and I've been a resident of Los Alamos, New Mexico for the past 16 years. Got to know this, this wonderful town of Los Alamos as well as New Mexico. I love New Mexico. And so hanging out uh, ever since I moved in town, I got involved in a, a pumpkin glow experience in the heart of downtown Los Alamos at our Fuller Lodge back in 2005. It was only a couple years old in terms of this pumpkin glow. And I said, well, I want to submit this creatively car carved pumpkin I have. And I did, was, did a little something um, non-traditional carved leaves and stuff. Well, it turned out that my pumpkin, of all pumpkins uh, and, and a couple others, uh, got my, pit, uh, my pumpkin had a picture taken at the Los Alamos Monitor. And there it was in front page. And it's like, well, that's my pumpkin. So anyway, so I got hooked and I thought, you know, hey, I love pumpkins and carving is so easy. It's a very easy art to do. And so ever since then, you know, m most years I was able to carve a pumpkin. Well, uh, door opened for me about two years ago to participate in the actual Los Alamos Arts Council. And so, again, I uh, got to be, become quickly a vice president. And then those who got started the, the Pumpkin Glow uh, retired. And they said, well, hey, you love pumpkins. Why don't you do be this Pumpkin Glow coordinator? So I said, OK, sure enough. So again, so uh, last year I took the reins of the Pumpkin Glow. And we got uh, the community involved. And we had um, over 200 pumpkins of people carving lots of new, uh, neat things, you know, from kitty cats to to historical uh, themes, you know, Oppenheimer and Groves and, and, and Disney characters and, and totem pole pumpkins. It was just a wonderful community experience. Uh, so we all enjoy that. But as, as I'm monitoring and watching, you know, my first time taking this on, I was like, okay, what are, the, what are the issues that we're facing to make sure that we have it enjoyable? Well, it was all wonderful and laid out. We tried to create some more space. But then uh, noticing that there was a long line of people waiting and as I listened and I found out that people were waiting two hours to wait to see these 200 pumpkins, I was like, oh, we need to figure out how to solve this sure. problem. And so sure enough, <laughs> you know, what do you do when you're in Los Alamos? But you talk to engineers. <laughs> okay, we have a traffic problem. How do we do that? How do we solve this problem? And so that being said, they said, oh, well, you need to spread the pumpkins out, spread the pumpkins out, create more space between the pumpkins. So that was October. It was the end of October. And so... Uh, I, then I had, uh, some between uh, that and Christmas time, uh, I had this dream of just these pumpkins all lined up. And the word Guinness came into place. And Guinness, like, wait a minute, is there some sort of uh, Guinness world record in terms of pumpkins lined up? So sure enough, that next morning I woke up, I'm looking at Guinness' website, and I'm like, oh my goodness, there's like 15,000 pumpkins lined up somewhere on the East Coast where all these pumpkins are growing. Uh, just totally uh, just awesome, uh, lots of pumpkins in that, in that direction. But then I stumbled on a record held by uh, Galloping Youth Ranch in uh, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Your neighbor. Our neighbor <laughs> of all places. And they had a Guinness World Record. And sure enough, they had, back in 2013, 1,060 people carving pumpkins simultaneously. 1,060. You can beat that. That was my, excuse me, that was my <laughs> first thought. I was like, we can do this Los Alamos. <laughs> so, so sure enough, so I said, hey, we're going to carve just a few pumpkins. Take, it takes more than five minutes. So here, here's, here's the specifics. Uh, we all get there. We each have our own pumpkin. We carve for more than five minutes. It's not a race. More than five minutes, eyes, nose, and mouth. So I said, oh, we can do this. So sure enough, we put an application in to Guinness, and, and we waited. We waited uh, from March to like probably the end of May. And we're just waiting, waiting, can we get approval? And so that in itself, you know, getting all the documentation, that in itself to get approval from Guinness is a huge step. So sure enough, we got the approval like, yes, sweet. Oh, here's the fine print. Uh-oh. <laughs> First rule, 
Uh, the pumpkins must weigh 24.25 pounds each, each or larger. So what size is that? Well, this is, okay, that's pretty close. Uh, <laughs> so where are you going to find? So believe it or not, uh, I reached out to my local Smith's Marketplace, uh, Isaac Chavez, and he connected me with uh, Don Lucero, who's involved with Pueblo Fruits and Vegetables, Inc. here in uh, Albuquerque, as well as Michael Vicente K., uh, who's involved with the Farmers Marketing Association. And they say, oh, this is awesome. So, right again, <laughs> attitude. When you say Guinness, people light up. They jump up. They it. jump up. You know, the whole, the whole energy of conversation jumps, jumps See, up. See, I did too. So, exactly. So, <laughs> anyway, so they said, oh, we want to do this. So, immediately we start, we reached out to Steve Ness of Ness Farms in Estancia to say, hey, we want to grow huge pumpkins specifically for this event. So, we reached out to them and they, he started working on it right away. And so, a week, uh, two weeks ago, Friday, we went to Albuquerque after harvesting all these pumpkins. Uh, we're looking at least right now 60 bins of these huge pumpkins uh, that are weighing, you know, more than 24.25 pounds, bigger. Uh, they're coming up to Los Alamos. So we're looking at least 32,000 pounds of What? Pump, and how many pumpkins? So we're looking at, so that, there you go. So the goal <laughs> of being a thousand, good question, 1,060. You've got to at least do We've got to have 1,060. So that being said, we are, our goal is 1,300 pumpkins coming into Los Alamos. Goodness. Now, here's the deal. Now, again, it's the, the way we spelled it out because of, of what the Rio Rancho uh, group did. We said uh, the citizens of Los Alamos and New Mexico. So this is why I'm here today to say, Santa Fe, you're welcome to come and participate in this event. We would love to have you be, uh, be, be you're our neighbor, and we'd love for you to come participate. I but, think that'd be great. But here's the, here's the detail, because I've got to place the order for these pumpkins. Uh, the key on this is that people need to buy their tickets by this Friday, October, is... October 18th. They need to go to LosAlamosArtsCouncil.org to purchase a ticket. Now, the ticket is only five bucks that you get this huge pumpkin that you can take home after the fact. And, and here's, here's even the icing on the cake. Pumpkin Masters, who's up stationed out, the signature brands stationed out of Florida, and we're working with them in New York City as well. I reached out to the beginning of this process, and they said we would love to jump in on this. And they're donating thir no 1,400 carving uh, kits uh, for this experience. Is the that what this that's, is? That's it, right. So a scooper and uh, the, the the carving tool. It's not a knife. It's a carving tool uh, because it's safe for kids and, and grown-ups and all. Uh, all in one carving. pumpkin yep, carving kit. Yep. And, and give us an idea. Okay, so it's going to be held on October 26th. You need to arrive by certain times. Tell, tell the public what they should do if they want to partake. Right. So, so key is you've got to have a ticket because ticket, okay, part of the whole process is, is documentation. Uh, we could have hired Guinness to have an educator come out, fly, I guess, out of Ireland. It costs us $10,000. No. No. So what people need to do uh, is buy their tickets. And so when they come... A week from Saturday, uh, October 26th, they need to arrive at the, at the Cultural District, uh, uh, Fuller Lodge, by 2.45. By Is that by Starbucks or by the uh, post right across office? From, right across from Starbucks, yes. By the post office? Right, right by the post office. Right I worked the, there for 20 years with all your engineers and your scientists, so yeah, I know exactly there you go. where to go. So, right, so the, we'll, we'll create a map. If, if Once you uh, buy the ticket and we get your email, we'll send you a map of where you can park and then when you can come in and stay, in, stay on that lawn at 2.45. <laughs> That being said, at 2.45, we're going to say, hey, thanks for coming. We're going to thank you for all our sponsors like Nest Farms, Miss Marcus Place, uh, Flowers by Gillian, KRSN, uh, all of the Farmers Marketing Association, Public Fruits, and all the business in town that are they're jumped up behind this. We're going to thank them for that. Then we're going to have a little speech in terms of well, how do you want to make sure that you're safe with these, with these tools. Uh, I believe it or not, we had a lot of people go, see my $5,000 five, five, five uh, pumpkin carving knife att <laughs> attempt? Well, we're not going to do knives. We're going to use tools. Uh, we'll provide those for you. But we want to make sure we have a little speech from a, a, a registered nurse or doctor, hey, how to make sure you're safe. And then once that has happened, then we're all going to come and going to exchange our tickets. Make sure you have your ticket. Uh, or exchange for your wristband. This is where the documentation comes in. We've got to have people that have wristbands. And this is how we're counting how many people we have a part of this experience. And how many pumpkins? How many? One person per pumpkin. Now, here, the finer part on this again, too. So, that we're going to spread all up and down Central Avenue, right downtown, the heart of downtown. We're going to spread up in downtown. And we're going to have groups of 50 people, 50 spaces, one person per pumpkin, uh, to have, to have uh, that, that attempt experience. Now, because we have that pumpkin carving attempt zone, uh, we're going to allow first for the people to 
you know, families, you know, friends, whatever, help you to get that pumpkin out. Uh, uh, that's going to take some time, a little time and effort. So everybody can just have some memories gutting this pumpkin for this world record attempt. Then when we're all done with that, then it's going to be one person per pumpkin. Now, because they're thick shell pumpkins, we're saying 10 years and up. 10 years and up because we want to make sure everybody <clears throat> completes the task of eyes, nose, and mouth for more than five minutes. So when we're all ready and everybody's cleared the, the, the pumpkin carving zone, you have one person per pumpkin. And then when we say go, eyes, nose, and mouth for more than five minutes, uh, it will it'll give you a chance to go until maybe 4.30. Are you going to uh, provide bags? Or so, oh, yes, I'm sorry. So, yes, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, what are we going to do the pumpkin oh, yeah, yeah, seeds? We've got to make some flour. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, before, before we even <laughs> say go, seeds. that's right. Thank you. Before we say go, lots of details. Before we say go, so Smith's Marketplace is willing to donate uh, the, the, the uh, grocery Smith's Market bags. Gro grocery bags and put the seeds and stuff there. And then Cooperative Extension Agents is willing to give us a little flyer that says, hey, what do you do with the seeds? Or what do you do with the pumpkin after the experience? You know, some good positive ways to make sure these pumpkins are being used. So yeah, what are you going to do with the seeds and the pumpkins? So again, people, people can, excuse me, people can take the seeds uh, and uh, like roast them or, or maybe uh, yeah. they grow, you know, that's I'm not, I'm not expert into that. Grow, yeah. growing a pumpkins or even take, uh, breaking the pumpkin up and using it as garden compost. Um, food? So, sure, food. For pumpkin pies? Oh, pumpkin or pies or horses? used for animal feed or so, right. So that the end result in all this, and we'll get there in a minute. Um, yeah, so all that and immediately they can be put into the, these Smith's bags, the, uh, the guts and the seeds and put them in the bag and then again people can take them home. Now if they don't want to take them home, maybe we can collect them and then maybe we put them in our, our, our designated pumpkin uh, uh, dumpsters that the county is providing. And again, then we'll use that and put that towards, uh, uh, towards uh, uh, our garden uh, uh, fertiliz fertilization uh, process. Guinness's rules again, we could either give it to animal feed or we could even just give it to, uh, in terms of garden compost. So Guinness says, yeah, you can do that. But you're going to take your pumpkin home. So, all right, so there you go. So, so we do the attempt. And so, again, if we have more than 1,060 people and we've got these uh, city councilors who are going to be our official witnesses, and then we've got our stewards, each watching the 50 people, making sure they're all doing it all right, mm -hmm. people are not jumping in and out of that carving zone. Uh, once that's all said and done, hopefully by 430, the attempt will be done, but that's only the part one. Part two is then we take, again, this is where the high school football team, yay, is coming in, and, and other t uh, t guy, guys and gals who've got muscles. We're going to take these pumpkins and put them back on the trailers, and we're going to spread it out all the way from the, our library uh, on Central Avenue, both sides of the street, all the way from there, all the way to the municipal building uh, in our town. So we're spreading them out to make this world grand display. Nice. That'll tie into our pumpkin glow that evening from six to nine. Will you have the uh, folks from the Guinness World um, Book present? No, because we'd have to pay them ten thousand dollars. Oh no! So, but again, we're gonna have city councilors or our official <coughs> witnesses. We're gonna have our stewards who are our independent Los Alamos council making documenting all their fifty people. We're gonna have a drone flying over to document the the, the overview. We're gonna have our city paper uh, photographers taking pictures. So again, we can have some. All that being said, we, after this attempt, we have to submit all that application to Guinness. Now, again, this is why we keep saying it's an attempt. We submit all this application into Guinness, and then we wait <laughs> for the official. Uh, official, done. yes, you did it. Is Real Rancho competing again this year, or you don't know? So, good question. <laughs> so, good question. So, I, read out, I, found, I found out the guy's name. Uh, I, I'm very grateful to uh, uh, Tristan Ramona of the Monitor, by which he reached out to the guy who holds their existing record there at Galloping Ranch. Max Wade is the name. And so I reached out to him about a month ago. I said, hey, great guys that you guys did that. And hey, but give me some inside scoop on some stuff. <laughs> and so, yeah, he, uh, he gave me uh, stuff. Some and tips. But he, tips as well. And he, but the second sentence he said was, man, we're crazy doing this. <laughs> so all that being said, yes, yeah, so, so we're, we're documenting ourselves uh, with all these things and then giving it to, to Guinness to be able to say, yeah, you did it. Awesome. So give us a, a lesson in how you begin to carve a pumpkin for those of us who are not very good at it. Well, again, I think you, you're using the large knife for sure because they're going to be thick shell pumpkins. It's just cutting the top part here. And I would say even uh, just uh, put an angle here in terms of you goes around the pumpkin like that. And then again, when you get the guts and stuff, it's just using the scoop and, and scooping out. And sometimes you want to get your hands messy, you can do that. We'll have some buckets of water there that you can wash your hands afterward. But then, yes. But then once, once that all being said, when we start the attempt, it's a matter of just taking your time, just going in straight, uh, as easy as you can. If you want to go straight or if you want a little angle, that's fine. Just take your time, just going and just, just saw. 
saw in saw saw your eye, your eye shape. Now again, we'll probably give people. Yeah, I know we will. A little lesson. We'll give a little lesson. Because yeah, we'll have a little sharpies, and they can they can do the eyes, nose, and mouth before we do that, just to give them a little guide if they need that. Some people are freestyling, uh, and yeah, you just take it and you just saw it, and, and it's, it should be pretty easy. Other than. We'll see how thick shell these pumpkins are. That would be the only concern about children 10 and under. Now, that doesn't bring up a good point. Some families are like, ah, I want to participate in this. So we say, but they're too young. So we say, station yourself in such a way that as you're carving, if you're comfortable, your kids stay just on the other side of that traffic cone, vinyl tape, pumpkin carving zone. Just have your kids sit there and watch you and cheer you on. Or maybe you have a neighbor to help watch your kid while you, you do that. Like, go mom, go dad, you know, carving that pumpkin. You know, if they're younger than 10. So hopefully their goal will be uh, not to rush, but to, and, and, but not even, I mean, you could be creative. Yes. Now you can say, and I ask Innocence, and they can't, does it have to be tr the traditional, it has to, it does say traditional jack-o-lantern. So I said, well, can you be like droopy eyes or starry eyes? Or, or Halloween themes? So, but <laughs> it, so it has to be eyes, nose, and mouth. Interesting. Now, after you're done, if you've got eyes, nose, and mouth, it's a droopy nose or a droopy okay. eyes or whatever. After the fact, now, if you still got time and other people working on it, you, we'll let you have time to be creative in terms of like, you know, creating ears or no, you know, hair, image, things on your, on your pumpkin. But we have to at least foresee eyes, nose, and mouth. Where are people going to park? Because there's, you know, I worked there for 20 years. There's one way in, one way out, more or less. Right, right. So there is construction happening. We're, we're, uh, we're grateful in terms of a, a new things happening, so we want to make sure people have time. But yes, we're going to provide, uh, uh, there's, there's going to be con uh, parking there at um, uh, the uh, Judicial Center is going to be close to there. There's going to be parking in uh, Central Park Square, uh, Metzger's Parking Squares. We're going to try to get the, uh, all the reason we need to get people's emails so that way we can send that map that will highlight uh, the parking spaces. One of our parking spaces, we're going to have food vendors as well. Oh, we're going wow. To have, we're going to have a band there. What kind of food? What kind of band? Uh, uh, food trucks. We're, pull, uh, we're asking the food vendors to submit their application now. So It's going to be a big bash. It's, it's going to be a big bash because it's a Guinness World Record attempt. Oh, my. I think you'll have a lot of participation. So that's what we're hoping. So all the reason... Again, we're telling people, if you're in Los Alamos, we need to make sure that you are purchasing your ticket by this Saturday, uh, October 19th. Online. Uh, online by Friday. And if you're in person at our, our, our heart of our town department store, CB Fox, by Saturday. So that way we can have assessment in terms of where we're at. Did you mention the um, email address earlier? I think you did. L-A-A-C. Pumpkin Carving, carving party, party at Gmail. And that's if you have any questions. So that stands uh, for the Los Alamos Arts, Arts Council. Arts Council Pumpkin Carving Party. If you have questions about that, about any, any of those things. Maybe here, they but, should call you. Uh, let, let's use that. <laughs> you don't want anyone I don't calling want old New Mexico calling me. I'm, I, it's good just enough to keep up with what's happening right now. But again, if they want to purchase tickets, they can go to LosAlamosArtsCouncil.org to purchase tickets. Interesting. So. Well, this is great. And so this ought to be fun. And tickets may be purchased online for $7. Yes, there's a little service charge in that. So, right. So it's not a fundraiser. It's, it's, it's truly, it's, it's uh, supplementing the cost of, of, the, of the cost of the pumpkins that are coming in. So, yeah. Uh, but again, now if people want to volunteer and help out. Uh, yeah, you need volunteers. We need volunteers. You? So again, we're doing a pre-set up that morning. Uh, Starbucks coffee, first thing in the morning, 8, 8 a.m. that October 26th for you need coffee. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to pre-set <clears> all the cones, the vinyl tape. We're going to have some tables. Now, oh, very good point. We're going to have some tables for those who can't get down on the ground because we're going to be doing right on the street. Uh, we're going to have tables lined up in the middle. So we're looking for organizations that have, they have tables. Uh, we're going to give them free PR on that if they want. Uh, and then, um, but everyone else, we're encouraging to make sure they bring maybe some padding. You know, I don't know if it's a blanket or you know, whatever kind of foam type padding. If they're going to be down on the ground carving. What kind you use, use for, for your garden. For your garden, right, exactly. So that would be something we want to make sure we got the word out on that. So it says here that the volunteers are needed, um, but when do you want the volunteers to show up? So it's subject, again, and we know people are volunteers, and so we want to be sensitive to uh, their time and availability. But, you know, I'm starting at 8 o'clock, and if you can 8 o'clock a.m. A.m., I know, and that's why I have the coffee. <laughs> uh, so 8 a.m. that Saturday morning, we're going to start moving into place. Now, for sure, though, I mean, all these tasks in terms of uh, the preset, the cones and the tables, uh, water buckets, those things like that. But for sure, all hands on deck at 2 o'clock, because that's when the street shuts down. That's where we're going to have forklifts moving these pumpkins from our staging areas uh, and all up and down Central Avenue, all spaced forklifts out. Forklifts picking them forklifts up. Forklifts, yeah, they're, again, huge pumpkins. 
uh, moving these bins up and down uh, Central Avenue, uh, placing those in place, uh, making sure we're safe as we wander, uh, move through, this, through the street. But all hands on deck between 2 and 2, 2.45 is when we got to get mm -hmm. everything <clears throat> converted to that pumpkin carving zone. You didn't mention anything about the lighting. Ah, so the lighting again. So Pumpkin Masters, uh, it, Pumpkin Masters is giving us uh, free lights to give away. Uh, and so that's a, that was a little bit of a, uh, a nice surprise that we got this week. But we've already invested in little tea lights, uh, like little electric tea, tea lights that we're going to put in the pumpkins uh, for this grand world display. Uh, but then we're also we're still working through what does it mean in terms of the, the actual pumpkin glow itself that evening. We traditionally we've always put the actual flame candles in there. So we're going to make sure that we're working through with the, the county, make sure that's safe, uh, fire extinguishing uh, experience. But we'll see in terms of how many uh, lights that we need to put in all these world grand display and then also uh, what kind of lighting we're going to use for these, these, this pumpkin globe. Well, I'm going to wish you lots of luck on that. And, and what's your expectation? A lot of fun. Lots of fun. A memory. And a winning. A winning experience of 1,300 people carving pumpkins at the same time. So, yeah. I mean, and so, you know, Los Alamos is not only known for the atomic bomb, but also something <laughs> that's, that's truly true. a unique experience by which we're saying, hey, uh, bringing the community together in a very unique situation, you know, from from all kinds of organizations coming in to have a, this shared memory and to say, hey, we, five, five, we did this. And then as we move beyond that, even though when it's said and done, it's almost like doing the Super Bowl, then after that, you're like, well, what's, okay, we've been there, done what that. <laughs> to me, again, it comes back to relationships. It's saying, hey, wow, we had this shared memory. And how do I continue as I interact with you in the community? How can I be kind? How can I be uh, listening to whatever? needs or concerns you might have. How can I be a good neighbor for you uh, after the fact? That is my attitude. That's my desire. And hopefully that we as a community can come do that and share that, that, that common bond and show love, kindness, respect after the fact. That's awesome. That's just very, that's good to hear in this day and age, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Right. And, and the Arts Council, you're a member of that. Tell us about the Los Alamos Arts Council. So Los Alamos Arts <coughs> Council has been around for 50 plus years. And again, we're involved in lots of different things by which we're creating the arts within the community. Again, we're involved in terms of children's theater. Uh, we're involved in um, uh, the kite festival, the annual kite festival. Uh, we're promoting lots of other arts in terms of like you know, poetry. We had just had our evening of arts and culture here this just recently. Uh, you know, had the, the uh, highlighting our community wins. Uh, we were looking at uh, pottery influence, uh, uh, celebrating that. Uh, we're still exploring lots of other capacities by which in terms of uh, doing uh, the arts within uh, Los Alamos. How sweet. That, I mean, I think about, you know, we're neighbors and, you know, most, you know, people work up on the hill and mm -hmm. they go to work every day, come back to Santa Fe. And we, we, real, we really need to realize that we are neighbors and we need to be inclusive. And so I'm glad you took the time to come here sure. to invite the Santa Fe um, arts uh, community and the college and the people from Santa Fe because, like I said, we are neighbors, and that's a really uh, big event for New Mexico. And yes. we, we've got to beat Rio Rancho. We've got to beat Rio We're Rancho. We're neighbors, but they're, a f they're quite a f <laughs> further away. So if, if there's anything you'd like to say in the last couple of minutes we have left, what is that you would like to invite the public and tell them to come have some fun with some good people? And what else would you like to again, say? Again, I am thankful again for all <clears throat> the people, again, who have shown an interest in supporting us from our sponsors to you, Valerie, and, and, and all you know, Pueblo Fruits and Steve Ness and uh, Michael and all these, these behind the scenes things. Because you know, when you think about, oh, this is going to carve a couple of pumpkins for five minutes. Oh, this is going to be easy. There's a lot of behind the scenes work. And so there's definitely all that, very much grateful for, for all the people plugging in, the Los Alamos Arts Council, Los Alamos Community Services. Uh, they have come together as a team. Uh, it drives some of us a little crazy because we got other things going on. <laughs> you it's, are busy. It's not just about <clears throat> pumpkins. It's about all these other wonderful things. So again, all the graces we extend to each other as we go through this, because again, there's other, you know, lots of other things. So again, I'm very grateful uh, for still moving through to get this, this project done. But again, it, but part of it again is everything is all the buzz is all about from from the balloon fiesta that we heard. Hey, something's happening at Los Alamos Arts Council. They're doing against world record. So all the way from New York City. Hey, they're they're doing something great in, in Los Alamos, putting us on the map again for Yay. for this kind of fun thing. You know, all that being said, the important thing is now we got to show up. We got to show up from anybody from New Mexico uh, that can participate on this, uh, New Mexico citizen uh, to Los Alamos. So again, if people want to purchase tickets. They need to do, if they're beyond the Los Alamos realm in terms of not walking into CB Fox, 
They need to purchase their tickets. Los Alamos, uh, Council, uh, Los Alamos Arts by this Friday so we can mail your tickets. But then also, but if you're in town though, we need to have you do by Saturday uh, to go to CB Fox to pay five bucks. So you have a few days. You have a few days. <laughs> we can do this. And I mean, are you, you going to do this next year? I'm curious. So again, when I talked to Max Way, when I reached out to Rio Rancho, I said, hey, you know, we, we could definitely make this a Los Alamos versus Rio Rancho thing. Yeah, he, said, he, he actually, he, he, he volunteered that information because I already been using that card already. <laughs> I've been saying, we're going to beat Rio Rancho. But he's already, he already pulled out and said, we could do that. I said, yeah, but hey, Max, when was the last time you did this? He said, uh, 2013. Well, when are you ready to do it again? Yeah, maybe four or five years from now. <laughs> Good. Well, that means you're going you're gonna to show them. Yeah, there you go. But I'm, I, next time we do this, maybe, we'll see. Maybe four or five years from now. We'll see. You're going to start with this t this time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, well, thank you, and it's been a pleasure well, to meet you. you. And thank, thank you. you for for watching, and I hope you all can make it to the big event in Los Alamos. It'll be fun. And uh I wish you lots of luck. This is I had a lesson in, in carving, so well, thank you. You're welcome. And you're thank welcome you. back next year if you decide to, to compete again. Okay, we'll do. All right. Thank <laughs> you for watching. Uh, give us a call if you'd like to appear on our program, 827-4533. Thank you.